Welcome, Gun Runner. Hello everybody, back with another video and uh, another review of a, a, a book. So this one has actually been out for quite a while. Um, this is actually the second edition of the of the magazine of the book because the, I somehow missed it the first time. I can remember seeing it in Debate Smiths and thinking I was going to buy it, um, and then I didn't. And then I went back and they didn't have it anymore. So I'm being a bit gutted. And then I tried to order it online and it was sold out. But they have just done a reprint of it. It's the Mega Drive and SNES book. So on one side you've got Mega Drive. And turn it round and upside down, and it's Super Nintendo. So yeah, I like these double-sided books. They did a Commodore 64 stroke Spectrum one. They did the Master System and NES one. So this is the Mega Drive and SNES one. It'd be interesting to see what they do next. I know they did a standalone Amiga book, which I think um, was a bit of a missed opportunity because that could have been Amiga and ST. But um, yeah, they did do an Amiga book. But yeah. Uh, Let's have a look at this and see what we think. So it's the second edition, I believe. They they changed a few of the articles in the first edition to the second edition. I can't remember exactly what those articles were, but I think they did swap a couple rounds. So I think there is a slight difference between the first and second books here as well. So being the Sega fan that I am, um, I'm going to start off with the snares, get it out of the way. <laughs> And have a look what was here. So you've seen they made it look like the console on both sides, which I think is a really cool, a really cool look. I like it a lot. So the usual, we've got our contents, telling us what it's all about and what's in there. Starts off with obviously with an article about the hardware and um, the games, 10 perfect games. And I, I used to love these. They don't do these anymore. I wish they did, where they have all the different screenshots of the games. Which I think is brilliant. What well, those eighty something games there? An article on Mario, Nintendo's most iconic character. Not surprised to see that in there. Street Fighter Two Turbo, Donkey Kong Country, a game that sort of really pushed the SNES in the later years of its life when the the new consoles were coming along. I can remember um, that coming out when I worked at Game. And it's having it on display at the front of the shop all the time. And the music really starting to annoy the hell out of me. I uh, never liked the game personally, but I'm not a fan of platformers. So that probably doesn't help. Uh, Super Metroid. Another one in Nintendo's big franchises. Got that there. Contra 3 The Alien Wars. Uh, really like that game on the SNES. So, um, and the Mega Drive version is good as well. But I like the... Uh, Mode 7 sections on the SNES version as well, they're really good. Mode 7 Heaven, an article on use of Mode 7 in games. And I did actually contribute a tiny bit to this article, um, which was somewhere, but I can't remember where it was. I think they, they yeah, they cut it down quite a bit, but there was a a bit about other systems that, that used uh, similar effects. And I wrote a little bit about the Lynx and how the Lynx's own chip uh, graphics kit could actually do something that was actually far superior to, to Mode 7, but it was two years before, and a lot of people forget that. And uh, I'd actually write a longer piece, but it got cut down and just into that little bit in the side, but still interesting. Axelay, um, I have to say, that's another game I do really like on the SNES. I think it's it's, it's be definitely the best shoot em up on the, on the SNES, and has some really, really nice graphical effects in it as well, um, especially the boss battles, I think, are amazing. Super Turrican. Uh, love the Turrican games. They're rock hard, but they're great games. And the greatest SNES is RPGs. I cannot stand RPGs at all. Um, I've never played one of light. So, uh, yeah, not for me. But uh, I know a lot of people out there bought the SNES because of its RPGs. Legend of Mystical Ninja. A little bit about Zelda. Actraiser. A uh, game I hear people rave about a lot. I don't think I've ever played it, though. I have to say. This is why you must play, so maybe I should do. Mario Kart. Super Star Wars Trilogy. Very apt, considering the um, new Star Wars being in the cinema at the moment. I can remember playing that when I worked at uh, Future Zone, I think it was, when that came out. 
top 25 SNES games as voted for by the readers of Retro Gamer. I can remember voting in that. I don't think any of my games even made the top 10 though, to be honest. Super Mario World was number one, unsurprisingly. Collector's Guide to the Super Nintendo, so if you are a collector. It's got the rarest things to find and uh, top imports and stuff like that as well. That's a really good uh, guide for those who want to collect for that machine. And a little tick box there, so you can tick the games that you do have in your collection. And that's where it flips over. So what I'm going to do now is just flip it around and start it from the beginning on the other side. And start with the Mega Drive book. Now the Mega Drive, I love the Mega Drive. It's my favourite console, um, for those who know. And my favourite home console, I should say, because if you're going to count all consoles, the Lynx just edges it. But uh, the Mega Drive will be my number one sort of plug into a TV home console. I love it. I got one for Christmas, Mega Drive 1, back in the day, which I shared with my brother. And it was a, a pack with Streets of Rage and Sonic, which was great because I really wanted Streets of Rage. It was the main reason I wanted a Mega Drive, was to play Streets of Rage. And my brother wanted it for Sonic. So it was a win-win. And uh, I think the Mega Drive has some of the best games of all time. In fact, it has my favourite game of all time, which is Streets of Rage 2. And it was just a wonderful machine. The, the quality of games on it was outstanding. Great hardware. I always preferred it to the SNES um, because it had the great arcade conversions. And that's what I wanted to play. So a lot about how amazing the Mega Drive was. And of course, of course the big thing about the Mega Drive was, especially in America, it, it um, changed the, the marketplace totally. Nintendo were dominating in the US. Uh, Sega, Sega as, as everyone knows, dominated over here in terms of the console that era with the Master System. But um, in America, you know, the Nintendo was everywhere. There was nothing else really. Um, you know, the, all the other systems were, were were distant in terms of the market, and Sega came from nowhere and just took the market and took all the market share with the Genesis, which is a pretty amazing achievement. So, uh, yeah, again, love the screenshots there. The Mega CD. I never had a Mega CD until um, more recent years when I, I actually got a bargain. I bought my Mega CD for 35 quid, which I still think is, is incredible. Um, a lot of people hate me for that because I got it with a load of games boxed for £35, which is, yes, I'm still pretty happy about that. But back in the day, I do remember one of my friends, actually my next door neighbour, Martin, getting one because he was quite well off, his family, and um, yeah, they bought him one literally on launch. So I do remember being absolutely wowed by stuff like Cobra Command when it came out. I think the Mega CD always gets a bit of a rough deal because it had some pretty amazing games on it, um, especially Final Fight CD there, incredible game. Um, Robo Lesti there, absolutely love. And all the core stuff like Thunderhawk and Battle Corps and Soul Star and stuff like that is brilliant. Arcade Flying Squadron as well, that's another great game. Jagex 2220, a lot of fun playing that. Yeah, great. Sonic, of course. How can you not have Sonic? I don't think there's a lot we need to say about Sonic. It goes through all of these appearances on the system. Gunster Heroes. I love Gunster Heroes. Um, and I've fallen in love with it all over again when it was released for the uh, the 3DS recently. Uh, great 3D version on 3DS. Makes the game even better. FIFA. Love it or hate it. It all started on the Mega Drive. I always thought the Mega Drive version was absolutely terrible, couldn't stand it, it was slow, it was annoying, um, I was too busy playing sensible soccer to um, even care about it. Revenge of Shinobi, um, one of the first Mega Drive games I bought, um, rock hard it was, I thought at the time, but outstanding game, is one of them where you know, you could get further every time you played it, Cause of Illusion, not for me, but a stunningly beautiful game, Toe Jam and one of my all-time favourite games on the Mega Drive, easily top five, um, especially as a two-player game. I think you know, any game that's superior as a two-player game is Streets of Rage 2. Um, you know, as a two-player game, Toja Manola is one of the best ever. Such a brilliant game. It's funny, it's got great graphics, it's got amazing music. Everything about Toja Manola is brilliant. Thunder Force 3. I do like the Thunder Force games, although a lot of people laugh when I say this, but Thunder Force 2 was my favourite. I loved the top down parts of it. There's Zog V, Sly, uh, Streets of Rage, obviously. It'd be wrong to not have a game of you know, Streets of Rage. The first Streets of Rage was a great game, uh, a lot of fun, but was just absolutely destroyed by its sequel, which was so much better. 
flashback. Uh, I was never a massive fan of flashback, but I know a lot of people are. Moonwalker, loved Moonwalker. Um, I wasn't a big Michael Jackson fan, but I loved Moonwalker. Was, everything about it was just so stylish. Really good game. Top 25 Mega Drive games as voted for by the readers. No surprise to see Streets of Rage 2 at number one. No surprise at all. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, number two. I don't think anyone would be surprised by either of those, to be honest. Collector's Guide to the Mega Drive. This is the rarest stuff. Yeah. Um, so if I've got any of those, I don't think I have got any of the, the, the rarest stuff available. Granada. It's a top import game. So yeah, I've got that. And Snow Brothers I've got as well. So I've got a couple of those. They're recommended as the top imports. And I think I've got, I've got the Punisher. So there we go. I actually got that as well. So the Punisher there, um, I have. I'm pleased about that. I've got my Punisher for 28 quid as well. So I'm even more happy with that. So that's the, that's, that's the Mega Drive side of the book. So yeah, um, that's it really. Um, if you love your Mega Drive or you love your SNES or you love both, you were just a big fan of the 16-bit years, and again, this is an essential book. Loads of iconic games, a real mix of genres and different stuff. I think there's something in there for everybody. Loads of great interviews. You know, these books are just pure nostalgia hit. And, you know, this one's no different. So, again, um, I'll put a link to the comment um, in the comments below where, where you can buy this. You can buy it. So it's, I, I, you can buy it from WH Smiths and Supermarkets and that at the moment, the second edition. Or you can order it directly from the Imagine Shop. So we'll put a link where you can buy that. Well, lots of these reviews coming up. Check out my review of the recently released um, book of arcade classics from Retro Gamer as well. And I've got another really, really nice book um, coming in the post at the moment from the 16-bit years. So I'm hoping I can review that in the next week or so. So look out for that one as well. I won't tell you what it is yet. Just look out for it. It's I'll give you a clue, though. It's not Mega Drive or SNES, but it's the 16-bit years. So there we go. So look out for that one. And uh, I'll see you all again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.